Welcome back to another Acting Analysis Friday Meters, and today it's going to be part four of season one of Succession. That's right, part four, we're closing in on the end of season one. I got three sequences to show you. Let's get straight to that. First up is this, where we have a setup of three characters. And this is exactly what I like, where it's all about reactions and staging, where you have two people and you don't know if there's a third one, but there is a suspiciously big gap here where you can put in a, another person. So watch out how this person reacts, right? It's in the elevator, looking somewhat as we all do at the numbers or whatever levels sees a person coming in and has that reaction. Again, for you, could be something totally else. They could be embarrassed, they could be angry, they could be nervous, whatever it is. But that's already interesting because it's a reaction to something that we don't see. So we anticipate, ooh, what's gonna happen? And then that character comes in. So now you have a setup with this, where you have a visual hierarchy. Maybe this person is the boss, like in this case. And then you have that visual hierarchy of him being higher. You can also do something where your characters are actually higher in frame. These two could be here and the other person is here, mad or whatever, and it's a smaller person, then you have a dynamic of that. So you can think about three characters and think about their relationship in terms of height and scale and distance and everything. Then on top of that, because this person cannot see what these guys are doing, you suddenly have this to play with. So you have reactions to this person, you have reactions between these two guys, it's all very nice and complex. So these two have their reaction there and then he tells him blah, 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 he liked something. And then you can play with him turning around and how much does he turn around? He's barely turning around his shoulder. Does he want to engage? Does he respect those people? Is he curious? You can see this here. He has this polite turnaround and it's about almost halfway through there with a 90 degree turn. And then they have their back and forth and you can see his reaction. So again, you can play with their reactions. They can say something. Then you can play with his reaction. And this could be something of he's happy because he meets them or he is polite and turns around to face us and then make some sort of facial reaction because he does not like them. So there's a lot you can do because they don't know what he's doing and he doesn't know what they are doing. And that's a lot of circles. <laughs> All right. Then he tells him something else. He said, by the way, blah, blah, blah. And I love this where he's kind of like, All right, how much longer is this going to go? Like he wants to get out of this elevator. He doesn't want to talk to those guys. So again, little things, posture, looks. But then he tells him something really nice. So you can see how he stops, he looks, waits, and then turns more. You can see this, where there's a slight turn and pause, and then you got more. He turns around more to face him more because he's more interested. So again, for you, think about the staging in terms of where they are, the, the how do they face each other? Do they want to face each other? And so on and so on. And this continues on and he has more reactions. He has some more things and it's again, you can do all kinds of um, setup in terms of the audio and then his reaction. He's pleased at this point. But again, this is for you. You can be very creative where even if the audio is positive, he can still pretend and you can kind of show the subtext. It's like he can show the subtext to the audience, but they don't really know what he's really thinking. And because you have three characters, right? One and two. And with that third one, once the other character engages, then you can make the turn here. And then you can think about contrast. Maybe he really likes this person turns around the way we see it here and engages, right? Where he turns around a bit more and he wants to talk to him, but he really does not like him. So when he says something, think about maybe the turn this way is different and sharper, or he turns around completely. So we don't see his face and suddenly his face turns into shock, seeing that, oh wow, he's really looking at me and he's not happy about whatever I said. So to me, this is all very interesting staging and a lot of uh, opportunities for reactions and pantomime and lip sync things and subtext and all kinds of stuff. I think this is a really interesting setup for three characters. This is a short sequence where he talks to this guy, but I like this where he just tells him, all right, are you in or not? And look at this. So you have this pose with the hand, thumb, all that good stuff, head and hands, but he holds it, right? So watch this, he holds. And then one more thing. So it's kind of like a, a pose that he strikes and then a sub pose. It's the same kind of, but instead of just having that moving hold or just that weight, you can do one more thing. Just a little bit of a tweak of an existing pose that he starts with the eyebrows and leans in a bit more and changes kind of like, are you in for handshake? And then come on, come on. He wants to really make a point of, come on, let's shake my hand. Let's, let's make this deal. 
So think about when you do have a pose and you hit that and it's, it's, it's the moving hold, is it just a pose that you're gonna hold for a second or two? Can you maybe potentially put in a sub pose where it's a bit more interesting and kind of emphasize the point a bit more? So just food for thought. Speaking of pose, we're going back to this where they are supposed to uh, vote on his dad. And I just like this for contrast. You can see how you have, they're very much, they're kind of nervous, very stiff. You got the contrast of them like this and him hunched over like that with this awesome finger pose. He has great pose in the show. And you can see how he regresses, he goes back, shoulders are up, head is down, such a contrast. So again, if you have multiple characters, Think about this, think about suddenly he's not as strong, think about the height hierarchy, is there a power dynamic, what is he going to do? And you can see this as we move forward here. He's not quite sure, even his looks, he can't really look at them, it's like, ah, it's like barely head move. He just wants to disappear because of his overbearing father. This is the whole sequence where he's trying to race towards this. And even this, like he's not really, ah, I don't wanna raise my hand. And it's about voting out his father. And of course he's like, oh yeah, you're not gonna do this. And he tells him actually you need to really smell your armpit by that. And then you can see how it just kind of, there's not much going on in the upper body. If this was a, a shot I would critique, I would even tell you to move more of the upper body when this arm goes down. But it's just, he's so stiff. And he, even this, he goes, oh yeah, I guess not. This could totally work for animation as well. It's a slight little lean, but even then that lean makes him even smaller. So again, think about multiple characters, even if it's just two, what's the contrast in posing? Is that important? Do you want this character to feel like they're hiding or they're just uncomfortable versus someone that is very confident or potentially also a bit stiff because they're stressed or nervous? And this goes on for the rest of the sequence where he just squirms around and doesn't really do much all through here. He just has, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want to say. And he stays within this, eh, in this very meek pose there. What else is cool in here is that as this character is complaining, saying, wait, 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 this was a vote, it counted. He just talks over him, says, all right, let's move on, and tells him, you shouldn't even be here, this is illegal. Watch his face. He listens to him, and look at that. He forms whatever, he wants to do whatever, he forms that shape way ahead. So for you, if you have audio where one character is talking, the one is, is talking, and you might even have a pause or not, think about, well, how is that one character now leading into his next part? And with this could be a very, very long anticipation forming this shape to say whatever. And this could show that this character is not waiting for him. Like he doesn't, I mean, he is kind of waiting for him, but he doesn't want to listen to him. He's just, I don't care. I'm just going to wait until you're done and then say whatever. And that long anticipation can show something, someone that's dismissive, that's disrespectful. But for you to think about if you do have a line and then pause and then a line, don't go back into the default. Like your default shape should not be happening. It could be one sort of emotion into another emotion and also facial shape and, and you know whatever shape you're gonna have here that leads into this because it could be angry, surprise, even angrier, or it could be where you have your lip sync and you really wanna talk about this. The character is really focused on this. So whatever shape really leads into this. It's a massively long anticipation to the next emotion and to the next shape or you know whatever he wants to say. And speaking of which, he says here, whatever. <laughs> I like that little, whatever, with that little turn and with a little nod. It's kind of hidden in the shake, but like, come on. I'm not waiting for you. So good. There you go, Succession, the gift that keeps on giving. There's so much in the show. There's so many different characters and that's why I like this as well, where you have different character depictions in terms of their attitude, their movement, how they walk, how they look, how long do they keep their eye contact or not. So again, for reference, I highly, highly recommend the show. And of course, as always, if you feel like any of this is interesting to you and you feel like that's cool, I want to use that for my shots and you want me to help you with your awesome shots, you can sign up for my workshop so we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. You can send me your work and I can help you if you want to. Link in the description as always and my workshops are always open for signups. And if you do feel like this is helpful, you can also subscribe. You know my spiel at the end. You can hit subscribe and that bell button to get all notifications because I do upload a lot. Other than that, if you're still watching, thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it and I will see you in my next clip.